being in a political office and being in a uh, pulpit are two different dynamics. You're dealing with the secular world versus the spiritual world. And when you deal with the secular world, you're dealing with so many other issues that you may not even deal with in, in the church setting. And so uh, while we have served as social, services ag social service agencies, we don't have the budgets of the government to make things happen for people in our congregation. We don't have the, we can't mass volume work as uh, governments do. And so there is really, to me, there is no separation of church and state. Um, if we look at scripture um, in the book of Isaiah, when Isaiah was prophesying about the one that would come, and he said that government would be on his shoulder, that we've become so um, blindsided to those in need, to the poor and to the orphans and to the widows, and that it is our responsibility to take care of them. And yes, it is our not only the responsibility of, of the church to do that and the, the faith-based community, it's also a responsibility of the government. Render unto Caesar that which is due Caesar. And so if, if we connect Caesar with Christ or Caesar with our faith-based organizations, uh, we might have a better world because we can take care of all of God's people regardless of their denomination, because I believe that there are no uh, sections in heaven for Jains, there are no sections in heaven for uh, Muslims, there are no sections for Christians, there are no sections for Baha'i. I think we're all gonna be in one place at one time, celebrating together. And hopefully we can have that kind of peace and camaraderie here on earth. People look at Washington, D.C. We, we set the example, we set the parameters for everyone else in our country. And if we can set the example that there's harmony, regardless of if you're tall, if you're short, if you're black, if you're white, if you have long hair, weaved hair, no hair, bald head, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you're from, but that we're all in this together. And I think it's just like interfaith work. If we're able to show uh, that harmonious camaraderie in the nation's capital from a political perspective, and it's not just a dog-eat-dog -dog world, get all you can, can all you get, and then run away with what you can, can run away with. Um, that is not the spirit I think we should show in Washington, D.C. I think we should show harmony. I think we should show loving kindness, that there's hope uh, for our world, that there is peace. Peace can exist. We brought all of these soldiers back home. We need to have something for them to do now. We need to show the world. What we, and it all starts here in Washington, D.C. The, the president, this is the city of, of, of what is deemed power. And so if it's that kind of uh, secular power, it has to be that kind of spiritual wow, power as well because they're part and parcel of each other. You can't have one without the other. That's like having the right and not having the left. That's like having front and not having the back. They all go together. If there's an up, there's a down. If it's good, it's evil. And so it goes together. So I think that the wider community might see Washington, D.C. As a, as, a, as a place of concern for its people and not just in Washington, D.C., but globally as well.